What's going on guys? My name is Chris and I'm with Regular Guy Training. For those of you who have been tracking this channel for a long time, you'll notice that my that my little introduction here has changed. You'll also know that my that notice that my name has changed as well. We are officially a thing. This company that I've wanted to start for quite a while now is officially an LLC and Additionally, as far as the courses and everything else that we're going that we're going to go ahead and offer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on giving you guys a website to go to until I have one that is complete and until I have a schedule worked out for you. But I will say because I'm quite happy that this is actually a thing, regular guy training is official. So we're putting it on YouTube first. Now, today's review is actually a um, was one suggested to me from the Patreon fellows from Doug and I'm going to go ahead and thank you for that because I'd forgotten that I'd picked this guy up a few months ago and yeah I do that sometimes where I'll go and I'll pick something up with the intent to review it and then I'll just forget to but this is the Trigicon MRO and aside of the fact that it basically looks like an Aimpoint T1 with tumors on it what does it actually do? How is it different? And why would you spend money on it versus an Aimpoint T1? Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now, it comes as no surprise to many that I am a huge fan of the Aimpoint T1 and H1 series of optics. And when this guy came along, I was rather unimpressed with just the first impressions of it. Because honestly, it looked like an Aimpoint that had cancer. And that's about it, really. However, um, after being spurred on and um, having it requested uh, pretty much over and over, um, I came to the conclusion that I should just go ahead and pick this guy up and do a review on it. Now, I have, I've had this guy since about December. Uh, it has primarily ridden on the 74 that you guys saw, but I've also used it on a, uh, on a short... AR uh, style rifle, uh, 12 and a half inch barreled rifle, and I've also had this guy uh, mounted onto a semi auto 20 gauge shotgun. Um, thousands of rounds out of the 74, under a thousand with a 12 and a half inch rifle, and something like 400 shot shells with the, uh, with the 20 gauge. Now, uh, first and foremost, there are a couple of things that I figure that I should address that I figured I would be concerned with when I first looked at it. The very first thing that I looked at when I picked up this optic was these exposed elevation and windage turrets. And I was quite concerned because I was rather, and I believe, and I believe that I was rightfully so, Rather suspicious that having these turrets exposed would leave them uh, vulnerable to being basically fucked with by the world uh, to the point where just uh, throwing the gun around or whatever would eventually lead to a shift in zero of some kind. What this, what um, I'm here to say honestly is that I was very pleasantly surprised. Those of you who have taken classes and stuff like that from me before have seen me just thorough my 74 and the last one that I did this was mounted on it and I just threw it and then I would pick it up and shoot and there would not be any um, real difference whatsoever and then when I would go to paper I would realize okay there were no changes to the zero at all so that was actually something that I was very very um, impressed with because they seem to be recessed just enough or flattened out uh, just enough to where the outside world doesn't really mess with them. Now, one thing that does annoy me a little bit is that when you're adjusting both elevation and windage, they're pretty ghosty, and the clicks that you would hear coming off of the turrets themselves are very, very quiet. What I found that is more useful uh, more often than not, is to have electronic ear protection on or just have no ear protection on whatsoever and just get my head really close because I just cannot hear uh, the clicks very well in the thing. 
um, would I prefer the adjustments on something like a T1, which is this direct competition, or even a hollow sun. Some of you saw that I'd picked one of those up. I absolutely would because you feel um, the individual clicks and you can hear them very well too. So it's something that I noticed that was a little bit irritating, but it does seem that the uh, elevation and windage um, adjustments are accurate to what um, is stated on the optic itself. And that's one click is one half minute of angle. Uh, translating this to 100 yards, we're looking at about a half inch at 100 yards. And that's definitely precise enough for a red dot um, of any kind. Now, next thing that we're going to deal with here is we're going to deal with the brightness settings. And a lot of people will notice very quickly that there are, that you are very obviously um, set up on two different night vision settings to where you have your off. The lowercase n would be the lower night vision setting. And then the capital N for the brighter night vision setting. And then you have daylight setting one to the shut off and then three, four, five, six. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is something that's kind of odd to me is that there is a shut off in between all of these. Now I understand guys that power off their optics all the uh, a lot to try and conserve battery. This would make sense for you because right when it comes out of the bag or whatever, you switch it over and you're on your first daylight setting, which is perfectly adequate for most um, for most times of the day. If we're talking about like noon, one o'clock, probably not. You're going to need the next one. But for most times of the day, your first daylight setting is perfectly adequate. But for guys like me that keep these guys on all the time, it's absolutely irrelevant. So it doesn't really take anything away. Um, so I, I'm just kind of whatever with the whole thing. But what I will say is that when it gets is that when you crank it up, it cranks up. Like it gets real bright in here. Okay, what you'll notice as well is that even on camera here, okay, that is starbursty as hell, obviously, um, as far as the naked eye is concerned. But then when you look at the red dot itself, it's actually pretty clear. Okay, now the dot itself is not this large on a regular basis. Uh, it, it's just a, refla a refraction coming off of the table, but you can see that there is uh, quite cl quite a decent amount of clarity to the dot itself. Okay, it comes in and it looks very very crisp, even more crisp than a recording um, button on the face of my camera. Okay, so it's very crisp and you can pick it up at pretty good distances. This is about a two MOA dot, unless uh, I got that incorrect, and I get the feeling I may have. If there's anyone with corrections, just throw them in there. I'm not perfect either. You have a very large objective lens up here, and that does widen up your field of view just a little bit, but what I did notice, which was a little peculiar about this optic, was that there is just a tiny, I mean just a tiny bit of magnification. This is like a 1.2, 1.25, um, as far as I can tell. And at first, and I'm not the only one that has this issue, but at first I was having issues keeping my eyes, both of them, open while I'm doing my shooting. It was it, it was messing with uh, my ability to focus um, quite a bit at first, but after a little while of using this guy, it's actually not uh, become a problem at all. Matter of fact, it has helped very slightly, I mean ever so slightly, at more distance or precise shooting with this optic. So you can still be fast, you can still keep both of your eyes open, provided that you don't toss the thing out after you first shoulder it. If you're willing to work on it a little bit, the uh, the ha the issue that a lot of guys have with keeping both of their eyes open is a non-factor, at least in my uh, opinion, because once I spent a little bit of time on it, it was an, it was nothing for me. Okay. The power source is very similar to a T1, and it's fixed very similar to a T1 as well, so that's no big deal. The mount that comes uh, that came with this guy actually really does impress me. This is from American Defense. I have the same thing on a Trigicon AccuPower, and I love the hugeness of the throw lever. I love the simplistic press down, pull out type deal on the throw lever itself. And what I also really like is it's um, 
uh, adjustments for different um, types of uh, 1913 sections that are out there because there are different because not everyone puts out 1913 spec on their guns so all you really have to do is just push in on this and this guy will pop out and then you can adjust the nut itself so that you you can get it nice and snug or loosen it up just a little bit so that you're not having to like really wrench the arm, the uh, the throw lever over it really does help some of you guys uh, do notice the rust in here um, what I will say is this, I'm actually quite impressed with both the mount and the optic because this guy has been run primarily on a 74 and the principal ammunition that I've been firing through that 74 is 7 and 6. Now, because that is corrosive ammunition, you have to dissolve um, the corrosive salts and all that jazz. So this guy has taken many a dive into creeks or little pond beds and stuff like that and just in regular classes it's been beaten on really really hard and as far as being zeroed to a rifle um, I have not had any issues whatsoever with it as far as losing zero or electronics package none of that what I will say though is that I took this guy off didn't adjust it at all put it on a 20 gauge shotgun and shot it for about 400 shot shells right what I did notice right after that though is that the zero had drifted dramatically to the right. Now if you take off an optic and uh, and then mount it onto something else, not touch it and then mount it to the previous um, rifle or long gun, you will have a slight shift in zero. But generally speaking, I have not encountered something like that before to where it was feet to the right rather than a few inches. Now, this could have entirely been my fault. I could have tightened this up to that shotgun as far as the throw lever mount is concerned or something like that. And it could very well be just my fault. But it is something that I observed. So, realistically speaking, that's all I have for that. I'm not, I can't say for certain if it was the shotgun that knocked it way, way off from where it was. And either way, taking it off and then mounting it back up, there was a, there's usually a little bit of zero shift anyway. So I'm, I'm registering that really to me as kind of like a non-factor and I'm pretty much assuming that I'm the reason why it was feet off to the right rather than just a couple of inches. So now here comes a question. The guy, guys are always going to ask this. Should I get this? Would you prefer this over an aim point T1 and all of that? Over an aim point T1, yes. And the reason why I say that is simply because of cost. Now, if this were put it up against an H1, which puts it about even as far as um, the optic and mount is, is concerned, I don't know. Whichever one that I could probably pick up faster or for less, um, or for a little bit less cost. Okay, like difference in shipping or something like that. Because I like them both, I really do. And you'll probably see more of these optics floating around as time goes on, pretty much. I mean, depending on how the Holosun review and stuff like that goes, because I'm gonna beat the crap out of that thing before I do a review on it. But as it stands right now, my opinion, this thing is awesome. It, it does exactly what it's designed to do. There's no real fluff in there. And yeah, although it looks like a T1 with cancer, everything that's here has purpose. And I don't have to worry about losing caps or anything like that. And I don't have to worry about like using little tools or whatever. Case rims, that's all I use to adjust this thing. Um, what, how tactile it is when I am doing the adjustments annoys me, but I can get over that. And either way, it's been functional the entire time. So, if you have any other questions, go, go ahead and throw them in the comments section below. Um, if you want to support this channel, go ahead to the uh, Patreon page and figure out um, what exactly it is that we do for you and for other guys in the training community and stuff like that. Uh, well, I'll leave a link for that in the description below. And very soon here, I'm going to be leaving you guys a link to the website for the training company that we've started. And remember guys, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.